All right. Core PLO concept number six tells us that much more often than a no limit, we would prefer our opponent to fold. And before we get into this any further, what I want to do is return to a few basic concepts that you're probably already at least somewhat familiar with if you played any reasonable amount of poker up to this point. Now, any successful poker player will tell you that you should always have a reason for why you're betting. But what are the reasons for betting? After all, it's something that's probably good to know, since you're going to be doing a lot of betting at the tables in the near future, right? The two main reasons for betting that I'm going to focus on for now are betting for value and betting as a bluff. Easy enough, right? Well, a common question I've gotten from students and seen on the forums is whether betting for protection is a good reason to bet in PLO, because, mo because most no-limit players agree that betting for protection shouldn't be a main reason to bet your hand. But given everything we've learned up to this point, do you think betting for protection is something that we should consider when we're faced with a decision of whether to bet or not in PLO? See, in PLO, betting for protection makes sense for a variety of reasons. First, recall from core PLO concept number three that hand values run a lot closer together in PLO than they do in other games, which means that oftentimes players have more equity in a given hand than they realize, which means that many times betting for protection causes them to make a mistake by folding away their equity in a hand. And if you're coming from no limit, this is one of the biggest adjustments you'll have to make. There's far more way ahead, way behind situations in no limit than there are in PLO, which is one of the reasons why you can get away with check calling out of position in no limit, but not in PLO. Plus, betting for protection makes sense because as you start putting in some volume at the tables, it won't take you long to realize that giving free cards in PLO is a cardinal sin, because not only are you giving someone a free chance to realize their equity on the turn, but there's also many turns that your opponents can pick up equity on and beat you on the river as well. All right, what I'm going to do over the next few slides is take you through a few hand examples from both No Limit and PLO that will help explain how the differences in equity between the two games change the type of lines that you should be taking. In the first example, after opening preflop, we hold pocket kings in position on an ace-seven-deuce rainbow flop. Now, I included this example not only because it's the same one Tom uses in the core PLO concepts, but also because it's the classic example that illustrates the concept of what Tom calls value checking, or what most people call pot controlling. The idea here is that even if we're likely to have the best hand, it's better to check an early street in order to maximize the money we make from worse hands and minimize the money we lose to better hands. Easy stuff, right? In this example, checking as a default option works well for four reasons. First, if we bet, we're unlikely to get action from worse hands, or for that matter, make any hands that are better than ours fold. So a bet doesn't make sense as either a value bet or a bluff. Second, if we're ahead, our opponent probably doesn't have very many outs. And in this case, if we are ahead, he can't have more than five. Third, if you check, it increases the likelihood that you get value from weaker hands on later streets, including hands like Queen Jack that can pair up to a worse hand on the Turner River. Fourth, by checking back, we induce bluffs that we can profitably call on the Turner River as well. Now, in PLO, there's many situations where the first condition holds, but the other three do not. So let's check out the next slide, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay, in this example, we're still holding kings with the same action and board texture, but this time we're playing PLO instead of no limit. Going back to what we were just talking about, with King King XX on A7 Deuce Rainbow against standard opponents, a C bet will almost certainly be called by an ace with side cards, and they'll usually fold everything else. At first glance, it seems like this is a great opportunity for pot controlling like we did in the last hand, right? But this is one of the easiest mistakes for a Hold'em player to make in PLO. So, using the same reasoning from last slide, let's take a look at the three reasons why betting is better than checking. First, although we're still ahead when we have the best hand, any opponent with a random 7 or deuce has anywhere from 30 to 40% equity, and therefore will usually be making a mistake by folding to our C bet. Opponents with backdoor draws can have decent equity as well, and boards that are a bit wetter than this one include a lot of marginal hands like bottom pair and a gut shot that will fold to a bet but have 35% equity or more against our kings. Second, by checking we do not increase the chance that we'll get value from weaker hands or hands that improve to second best. Those hands are still too weak to pay off a bet. Finally, whereas in the Hold'em case, checking induced bluffs that we could profitably call, 
Checking in the PLO example induces bluffs we can't call. Also, there are a lot more turn cards that will give an opponent profitable semi-bluffing situations, so our best strategy is to bet if doing so is immediately profitable, and check give up if it's not. Is all this making sense? Okay, good. So by now you might be thinking, okay, that stuff makes sense, but does that mean there's no value checking or pot controlling in PLO at all? Come on, Casino Crime, fill me in, dude. All right, all right, calm down. There's a couple spots where value checking is definitely the best option, and they basically fall into two categories. The first are cases where our opponent is unlikely to fold, and we have a hand with good equity, but that isn't strong enough to call a raise or get stacks in with. The second case is similar to the Hold'em example from a few slides ago, where we had pocket kings on the ace-seven deuce rainbow flop, but where we have significant playability advantages on later streets. In the next couple of slides, I'll take you through the two examples where both of these situations come up. So let's check them out. Okay, this goes along with the first reason for value checking that we went over last slide, which is where our opponents are unlikely to fold and we have a hand with good equity that isn't strong enough to call a raise or get stacks in. Here, the action is checked to us on the button in a multi-way pot, and we have the bare nut flush draw on jack 10 8 two-tone. In this example, Taking a stab on a wet board into a field of aggressive players that like to check raise is obviously foolish. The rationale for betting in close spots is that we don't want to give free cards to people with 30% equity or more. Here, our opponents are letting us take the free card with 30-ish percent equity. Plus, it's important to consider our implied odds, because if there's significant money in the stacks to play with, then it's definitely in our best interest to keep dominated draws in the pot. Okay, this example goes along with the second situation where value checking is a good option that I mentioned a couple of slides ago. Here, it's checked to us on the button where we hold ace-king-8-6 double suited on an ace-7-4 rainbow flop. Now, with top pair top kicker, a gut shot, and two backdoor flush draws on a board this dry, it's possible we would be happy to play for stacks in some dynamics, but generally this hand is good, but not good enough to continue against a raise. The reasoning behind value checking is that there's a ton of turn and river cards where we'll, where we'll be able to play profitably. And unlike the example from earlier where we had king king xx on the a7 deuce rainbow board, this time we induce bluffs that we can profitably call down, while also setting ourselves up to value bet the turn and river. Sometimes betting the flop will still be better, but checking is viable in a way that checking king king xx isn't. Hey, what's going on guys? Casino Crime here. Now if you like this video and you want more, then go ahead and click the subscribe button below right now. And if you want to join me for more of my 6 max success secrets and free video tutorials, just click the link to the right. See you inside the trainings. Good luck.